React seems to come with its own dictionary of terms for you to remember. One term I really didn't understand as a beginner was immutable. Not like muting a remote. Immutable like you can't change React's state by mutating it. But that's weird because we mutate data all the time in JavaScript. We do a lot of mutations with objects and arrays in particular. We mutate objects by adding or removing properties, and we mutate arrays by adding or removing array items. There's nothing wrong with mutations, so why does React try to tell us we can't mutate data? If state is immutable, it doesn't mean it never changes. But you avoid mutations by replacing old data with new data that includes the changes you want it to have. To do that, you have to follow the basic steps of make a copy of the old data, make the changes you want, and replace the original with the copy. So now you can see why this code won't work. We're adding a new user to state and then showing that user. But adding a new user won't cause our component to re-render. This is because the push method performs a mutation. It doesn't create a copy of the original user's array. This won't cause an error, but nothing's going to happen. To fix this, you have to update your state immutably by using a method that copies the original array before applying changes. You can also use the spread operator to copy the previous items into a new array. It's also important to realize a lot of stuff doesn't need to be put in a state hook. When I first started using React, I used useState for everything. But after building some projects, I found that a lot of state shouldn't be put in useState or useReducer. You've got lots of types of state in your React app. State can come from your server, from your URL, and there's state that lives inside local storage, to name a few examples. If you've been a React noob, you probably recognize this code. We're trying to manage server state by fetching it in use effect and put it in state. But you're way better off using a dedicated library like React Query for this, as I'll explain later. As for URL state, you might have tried to put it in local state like this, but if you're using Next.js or React Router, you've already got a dedicated hook like usePathName or useLocation that gives you all that data. Notice that we're using useEffect to try to synchronize some state. But when you know what doesn't need to live in state, you can get rid of useEffect entirely. So before you reach for a state hook, just go through this simple checklist. Is this a simple value that can be computed each render? Is there a library in my app that's already holding this state? Does it need to be rendered? And if the answer to all these is no, then you can consider putting that data in state. I use useEffect and useState all the time when first getting started with React. And a lot of the time, it was for a type of value called a derived value. Derived values are data that are created from other state or props data. When I was new to React hooks, I thought I needed to listen for changes in data with useEffect, like I'm doing here with the date prop. But the cool thing about React is most derived values like this formatted date can be used right inside your component with no hooks needed. If that data can be derived from another state or prop value, just do that during render. That component is going to re-render anyway when props change. This is one of the most common mistakes React devs make, even if you're not a beginner. Recognizing this new type of data will let you remove a lot of unnecessary code. Another very similar concept that will radically simplify your code is computable values. You might be computing some value within useEffect based off of state or props, but if that computation doesn't require an actual side effect, like a network request, you don't need useEffect at all. Like derived values, just perform your calculation directly inside your component. If it's an expensive calculation, you can always wrap it in useMemo to recompute it only when its dependencies change. At most, you're only using one hook and you have one less state variable to think about. Now be honest, how many times have you written code like this as a React developer? I've done it too many times to count, but this is a big no-no. Indexes that we get from the map function are not unique. Using non-unique indexes can come back to bite you because unique values are the only way for React to tell list items apart. But fortunately, there's a really easy way to create a unique ID in the browser with the crypto random UUID function. But you should never call it like this. Doing this will create the ID on every render, which tells React to destroy and recreate your list items every time the key value changes. Make sure to generate the ID only when your state is updated. 
If you have an array of objects, it's a great pattern to add the ID as a separate property on each element. Dependencies in React can be annoying. Dependencies are values that hooks need, and these have to be manually written out in an array. And what's worse is that these hooks will punish you if you don't add them. This cruel and unusual punishment is known as a stale closure. It causes weird behavior, such as your UI not displaying the correct data. Like in this simple timer component that uses set interval to count up from zero every second. This looks fine, right? Well, by not including count in the dependency array of use effect, it won't rerun when count changes. The closure inside use effect only captures the value of count in that first render, which is zero. And because it stays the same, the count value is stale and our timer won't count higher than one. Make sure to always include your dependencies and if things aren't updating like they should in your UI, check the dependencies array of hooks like use effect, use memo, and use callback. Out of all these lessons, the one I wish I knew years ago was that you're not a bad developer for disliking use effect. In fact, I try to avoid it as much as possible. There's a good reason why React frameworks have created solutions to keep you from using it. Use effect is hard because it only specifies when code should run. It doesn't tell you why it should run or what it should do. There are ways you can improve this slightly, such as naming your use effect function. But this doesn't fix use effect, it just aids your understanding. But I need use effect to fetch data, right? If you're still fetching data in use effect, do yourself a favor and replace it with TanStack Query or SWR. Use effect is probably the right. worst place to fetch data because of how the hook works. Fetching in use effect means you're always requesting data after the component is rendered, which leads to a far worse user experience as compared to tools that allow you to render as you fetch. Here are a few tips to keep use effect out of your code. Derive your values in render, respond to events with event handlers, and fetch your component data with React Query or on the server. But we're just getting started. I've put together all the lessons I wish someone taught me about React in a special bootcamp made to help you learn React much faster. You can check that out and get started at reactbootcamp.dev. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.